Hey everybody, Rux the Bucks and I here with some pack spoilers. We got a whole bunch of amazing Konzatar Kier stuff to take a look at, all coming in from packs and official spoiler seasons don't even start yet, which I'm really excited about. So let's check it out what we got. First we got the Abzan Wrath Effect for a white, a black, and a green for a sorcery. Choose up to one creature and destroy the rest. Okay, pretty solid. It is rare. Uh, solid Wrath Effect. I like it for EDH Commander, especially because you can use it with Voltron. But realize it's choose up to one creature. You can choose nothing and destroy the rest, which means you could effectively wipe the board. But it works very well with Voltron-based decks or decks that are machines. Gabe, for example, this card would be a great fit in because Gabe by himself can turn into a huge engine if you get rid of the rest of the field. Uh, I don't think it's going to be really powerful in standard unless standard slows down and there's not a lot of other good wrath effects but I think it does have a shot a potential depending how slow standard becomes other than that this is a big commander card I like it Narset Enlightened Master finally we have another American Colors commander six mana though ouch for a 3-2 first strike hexproof whenever it attacks exile the top four cards of your library to end of turn you may cast non-creature cards exile with narset this turn without paying their mana costs i like it a lot i really do i have a jaleva deck that is stylized similarly where you have a deck that has a lot of non-creature spells in it and jaleva is very effective with those now jaleva has flying which is evasion this narset first strike does not work that way with such a small body but it does have hex proof which means it could very easily pump it up very easy to turn into a voltron piece and that's a really powerful effect especially since it's the top four cards you have much more flexibility in controlling what's in the top four cards uh, a very interesting card i like it a lot as a build around i kind of wish it was a little cheaper since there's no evasion uh, even i think five mana would be a little more workable it just seems for a Voltron piece, it's a little late in the game. It doesn't have haste, and it doesn't have evasion. Still, I think a lot of fun decks we built around it, and it looks great. Very flavorful as well. Herald of Anifenza. We have one white for a 1-2 with Outlast. This is the uh, Abzan mechanic, and I believe, and it's two and a white. Tap it, put a 1-1 counter on this creature. Outlast only as a sorcery. Whenever you activate it, it puts a 1-1 white creature with token out to the battlefield. Seems pretty decent. You can only do it on your turn, but still, you play him turn one, and then later in the game, it's almost... I don't know if I love the mechanic, but it reminds me a little bit of Level Up, where it's... You have to really figure out where you're going to put your mana, but you could potentially work it out where this guy can get more, pow more and more powerful, good for aggressive builds, but then makes an army to accompany him. Uh, very cool token generator. I don't quite know if I love the mechanic, though. We'll talk more about it when we have more cards to speak about and see how it works out. Soul Tide Charm. Yes, we have charms coming in. I love these cards. This isn't such good art, I think, in terms of the picture shot. I think there's a better one down below, but we'll double check. It's This is black, green, and a blue. Choose one, destroy target and monocolored creature, destroy an artifact or enchantment, or draw two cards and discard one card. All very solid abilities, very reasonable for three mana. Of course, in Commander, this flexibility is super important, but I think the charms could, even if standard turns into a wedge-based realm instead of monocolored, uh, and the format slows down a little. This could be major players. I like this card a lot. Huge commander piece, and I want to see what the rest of them do. Necropolis Fiend, 7 and 2 black. Holy cow, for a follower 5 demon with Delve. Yes! This is a future sight mechanic, one we that they implied would be in Magic in the future. It totally makes sense that they bring it back here for the Soul Tie. It really fits them. And Delve, as you... Exile, you can exile X cards from your graveyard while casting the spell to decrease the cost, the colorless cost of the spell. Uh, so you, I mean, they word it here differently. That's how I've always thought about it. And so if you exile three cards, this becomes a, a six cost, uh, f four and then two black to play. But you have to exile from your own graveyard, so you have a limitation to that. Flying, X, tap it, exile X cards from your graveyard, target you get X minus X. That seems a lot to ask for. Double delve. In a creature, I do think it's very strong, but asking for double delve, unless you have some kind of dredge or dump stuff into your graveyard mechanic, I, I see it's kind of, it's nice because it requires real tremendous skill to know exactly when you want to use delve, how much delve, that I think is a lot of fun. That being said, it's a little awkward, it requires a double delve on a creature, I don't think it's nearly as powerful as it makes out with that. Okay, we got some more stuff because Wizards gave us tons of stuff. Temur Ascendancy, fantastic, fantastic artwork, gotta say. 
And it basically is fires Yavi Maya and a card draw engine in one. You get for three mana, creatures you control of haste, fires Yavi Maya is one colorless and then red and green. Whenever a creature with power four or greater, you may draw a card. Pure flavor, fantastic for commander, unbelievable card for commander. I love it a lot. It fits the color scheme, works so well in those kind of builds. Not everything. I don't think Riku would love it as much, but any aggressive builds with these colors, utterly fantastic. Great, great card. Uh, I think it has a chance, if the format slows down enough, it could maybe even see constructed play, possibly in standard, but definitely in commander. This is a house card. Salt Eye Charm, this is the same thing, just frontal, so you can see the artwork. Fantastic. I'm very happy they're bringing the charms. Mardu Skull Hunter, 2 for 2 1, enters the battlefield tapped. Ouch, that hurts for aggressive builds. Raid when enters the battlefield, if you attacked, target opponent discards a card. Okay, nothing special. It's a common. I don't like the hits play tap. That's a bit of a slowdown. Two mana to make an opponent discard a card that they choose. It's not even at random. Eh, it's okay. Nothing special. And then Crackling Doom. This artwork's actually pretty bad. Let's scroll down for they give a better one. Here we go. Crackling Doom. Black, white, and red. Instant. It deals two damage to each opponent. And then each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. Among creatures control. Wow, that is serious business. I don't know if that's that might be modern playable, possibly. Doing two damage and then making them just their lose their greatest creature, that's serious business. Um, I do think it's possible for a modern play. In standard, I think it's gonna be an excellent card. And uh, and limited, of course, it's it's great for its cost. It's a huge, great removal effect, even for that. So I, I think it's a pretty solid rare all around. And then, this is unconfirmed, but it's probably a dual deck card. Uh, this is specul more speculation because it's not confirmed. But Ivory Text Fortress, two, a black, white, and green for a 5-7? Five, 5-7. Seven, five, seven. Untap each creature you control with a 1-plus-1 one one counter on it during each other player's untap step. So that ability is not all that powerful unless they have tons of plus-1-plus-1 one plus one counters. Probably more of a limited play because 5 for a 5-7 is pretty good. This is probably an intro rare. Uh, speculation entirely, but it could be an intro rare. It does make sense. It does fit. And we've seen this artwork before. And last up, we have from Twitter a 4-4 bear token. What makes 4-4 bears? I'm excited to see if they have something that makes 4-4 bears in the set. That's serious. And this bear's a 4-4? Wow, what kind of bears do they have on on Tarkir. That's craziness. So those are just our initial wave of spoilers coming in from PAX. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about our new commander, about our new Wrath Effect, about our amazing, amazing commander stuff. I'm super excited for where the set's going. Wedges are coming back in style. I love it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, tap the like button. If you're new to the channel, check in and subscribe. I'll be keeping you up to date on all the cons of Tarkir and other kinds of spoilers that'll be coming our way really soon. As always, Rocks the Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.